In this screencast, uh, we will implement this, uh, the simple uh, PyNF uh, server uh, three-tier web, uh, three web application that we discussed uh, in the previous uh, screencast conceptually. Uh, this, we will implement the PyNF server as a forking server. Generally speaking, if a server must deal with multiple client connections, the server can use forking threading in a synchronous I.O. The concept of forking was developed and implemented on Unix. Uh, when uh, one process, uh, the parent process forks another process, the child process, both processes begin to run side by side with their own memories. In a forking server, every client request forks a new child process that handles the request. In the meantime, the parent server process keeps listening for new connections. And when a child request uh, handling process finishes uh, handling its request, it terminates. And the request handling processes do not need to wait for each other or synchronize because they run in parallel. While forking makes uh, many synchronization issues go away, it can be expensive in that each fork process must have its own memory. Some operating systems, notably Microsoft Windows, do not support forking at all. They use threads instead. And uh, threads are sometimes uh, called uh, lightweight processes because they exist within the same main process and share the same memory. Um, since the memory is shared when a new thread is launched, there is no memory allocation, initializ initialization, and copying. However, this more efficient resource allocation comes at a price. Synchronization becomes mandatory. One thread may, for example, interfere with the variables required by another thread. Several threads may deadlock and so forth. Uh, so if uh, we uh, do not want to bother with synchronization issues and can afford resource consumption, forking is a reasonable way to go. And uh, since our primary OS and in this screencast is the Ubuntu flavor of Linux, PyMath server uh, will be implemented as a uh, forking server. So uh, when uh, we're implementing, uh, we're exporting from the socket server um, uh, module, uh, I'm sorry, import uh, from the socking, uh, socket server module, uh, TCP server, uh, the TCP server class, the forking mix and class, and the stream request uh, handler. Uh, we will implement our customized request handler called the PyMath uh, request uh, handler, uh, and uh, that'll be uh, a subclass of um, uh, stream request uh, handler. So objects of uh, uh, PyMath request handler um, will be created automatically uh, each time a client makes a connection uh, request uh, uh, to a PyMath uh, server, and the client will be uh, the CGI, uh, the CGI script, and the PyMath request uh, handler uh, uh, class uh, has uh, uh, two semi-private uh, methods. Well, nothing is completely uh, uh, private. Uh, the first uh, is uh, uh, underscore underscore is legal password, uh, and the second is uh, underscore underscore uh, process uh, data. And then the third method, uh, which we will uh, talk about uh, momentarily, uh, is uh, handle the handle method. Uh, that method actually uh, overrides the handle method uh, from the stream request uh, handler uh, class. So this is uh, uh, the underscore underscore is legal password, and this is the underscore underscore uh, process uh, process data. And this is the handle method that overrides the handle method uh, from the super class. So let's go back to uh, is legal password. Is legal password method checks the password. The password is pymath uh, uh, SRVR7833 uh, must be known to the Perl script. Um, and for the sake of simplicity, we're passing the password as open text in a realistic application. The client and the server must encrypt it to protect themselves against any potential packet traffic sniffers that may listen in on their sockets.
the process uh, uh, the underscore underscore process data uh, method uh, extracts um, the uh, password and uh, uh, the expression received from the client uh, checks if the password is legal by calling underscore underscore is legal password and if the password is legal uh, it parses and evaluates the arithmetic expression um, so uh, if you look at this uh, um, uh, code uh, you will note that um, notice that we do not use Python's eval uh, generally speaking eval may present a serious security problem and should not be used uh, without uh, rigorous input uh, verification and if the password is not legal or the input cannot be um, uh, cannot be uh, parsed uh, then an appropriate exception is uh, raised Uh, this is where we uh, parse the input. We split uh, split it into the left operand, uh, the operator, and the right operand. Uh, split it by uh, on, on space, and depending on whether the operator is plus or multi uh, uh, multi uh, multiple uh, times, uh, we compute the sum or product of the two floats. And if there is an exception, then we'll we'll just raise the exception unable to parse input the handle method uh, gets the peer name just for the purposes of debugging then it um, reads a line uh, from the in stream uh, strips it of the new line character and then uh, calls the process data uh, turns it uh, into the string and writes it into the out stream and flushes the out stream and um, the code below uh, my server equals pymath server and so forth. Um, that's um, how we initialize uh, the server, PyMath server object on the local host on port number 7833 with the PyMath request handler as the handler object. Uh, print the diagnostic method below that the server, the PyMath server is serving on a particular port uh, and uh, call um, the serve forever method inherited from the superclass TCP server let's go and take a look at the math client math underscore client dot pl that's the Perl CGI script it uses the uh, CGI PM module and also the socket uh, module, IO socket module. It, uh, uh, this is the host, it's the local host, port number 7833. We uh, first uh, initialize uh, the socket on the host and the port, the INET socket. If we're unable to initialize the socket, then we print the di generate the diagnostic HTML that uh, will be displayed in the client's browser. We disable the buffering to speed up um, the communication between the client and server. And this is our password that the client and the server, the backend server, must share. And then we use the standard um, uh, tools of CGIPM that we talked about in the previous uh, screencast uh, print the header, print the start HTML get the uh, query uh, uh, the value of the query string uh, that's the one of the global CGI variables where the um, get uh, methods uh, store their inputs if the value of the query string is empty then an appropriate HTML is generated um, but um, a typical input will be will look like this this is by the way how you can uh, debug handle query offline without the browser so 
it's a bunch of name value pairs three a name value pair is the first operand and its value the operator and its value and uh, the third uh, name value pair is the second operand or the right operand and its value and we'll print the end of our HTML page if we're unable to close the socket we will exit and tell the client that we're unable to close the socket so how do um, uh, how does handle query uh, work well if it's the query is empty we'll let the client know that some sort of query must be specified otherwise we'll split the query uh, on the ampersand uh, so that will give us uh, three uh, strings each of which is encoding a name value pair then each uh, string is split on the equals operator into the argument name and the uh, value the name and the value once that is done uh, we um, contact uh, the math server that's the back end with the um, value of the left operand the operator and the right operand get its response and uh, print the response I'll generate the HTML that uh, will be displayed in the client the client's browser this is the subroutine that gets the response contacts and gets the response uh, from the backend PyMath server uh, get the um, values of the operands and the operator write to the server socket the password uh, and uh, the values of the first operand the left operand the operator and the right operand and um, end it with a new line character read the response into the scalar server response uh, from the server socket and then return the response and um, this is how we handle the response uh, from the server printed rather you get the uh, name of the operator the value uh, of the left operand the value of the operator the value of the right operand uh, this is the response from the server and then uh, print it as um, uh, bold and, and bold font uh, followed by two breaks HTML breaks let's go and start the Python server uh, our convention is that the Python server is in the code Python CGI so Python uh, hyphen M oops I uh, misspelled CGI um, HTTP okay it should be CGI HTTP server okay it's serving okay in that directory um, so let's go and start uh, the Python backend server okay uh, it's on the directory code Python math s uh, uh, r v r and it's serving now we can open the browser oh, but before we open the browser um, uh, let's um, uh, just for the sake of completeness um, make sure that we understand where uh, the math underscore client dot pl uh, is stored uh, since we're uh, starting the CGI HTTP server in the directory code Python CGI that directory must have the subdirectory CGI bin and that's where all of our scripts are uh, saved Let's do an ls minus l on that. Yes, so here it is. Math underscore client dot pl. That's our Perl CGI script. Okay, well, let's run it once on a simple input. Uh, local uh, HTTP, uh, local host, colon 8000. C, uh, a lowercase cgi uh, hyphen bin and math uh, client dot pl uh, question mark oh, let's put first parameter is one and the operator is plus 
and the second parameter is 2. Okay, here we go. Um, let's take a look. Yep, so the CGI HTTP server uh, ran the uh, request, the CGI script, and uh, our backend math server also processed. Uh, that request from the CGI client.